To some, it was the fulfillment of a dream. To others, it was an instrument of destruction. A creation that could change the course of history. A, B, N. It's headphones nailed! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, and in this case is going to be the 1993 film, The Rocketeer. So, for this particular review, I didn't really have it planned, aside from, for some reason, I was, it popped into my head, sorry, 1991 film, not 1993, but for some reason the film popped into my head about how I had not seen it, and I was just thinking about how I had good memories of the film, so I thought I would give it another watch to see if it holds up, what I like, dislike, was it as good as my memory um, is tell was, had of uh, the film, and just to see oh, if I still like it now. So the film is streaming on Disney Plus, so um, if you do have, still have your subscription or have been thinking about rewatching The Rocketeer, it is still streaming there. And overall, I want to say that the film was pretty good. Um, aside from random side things um, throughout the film, I didn't really find anything in particular that I could say I disliked about the film. It's a good period piece about how, or not period piece, but it takes, it's a film that takes place in the 20s and 30s in the heyday of the time for technology and pioneering. Um, between the world wars, the Nazis are on the uh, rise as far as World War II goes, and overall it had a lot of hope and optimism. The characters were, um, were characters you could get behind, the sets and all of that were very well done. Uh, when you're watching the film and when you see the Rocketeer flying in the jetpack through the skies, all of the, that special effects were very well done. Um, and for me, and I always, I mean, I, in general, I have trouble with this sort of thing, but as far as the, like the CGI of the Rocketeer flying through the clouds, I was actually looking at that to see if I could notice any tears or see how it holds up as far as the CGI-ness of it. And it was actually very smoothly done, so I don't know if they improved the quality of the clouds behind the Rocketeer or they adjusted the quality of the Rocketeer while he was flying. So the overall quality when he was in motion and landing and all of that was generally well done. Um, if anything, I'd probably say that maybe the landing was a little janky, but even then, if you're not really like, paying too close of attention to it, it was a very seamless transition as far as takeoff and landing. So. I want to say the film does a pretty good job of in that department. And granted, you have the budget of Disney behind it, um, so you're gonna have things, the best technology of the time, to hide that sort of stuff and have the Disney magic and um, technology behind making sure things like that look smooth and that um, you have people saying um, that this is well done or not well done, or you need to improve it, or you need to hide this or show that just to make sure everything is generally uh, level. So I want to say as far as that goes, the key piece of technology in the film was very well done um, because you want that or being or having that jetpack be the cornerstone of your film. You want it to be the best part of the film, even if other things don't hold up. But even the acting and all of that kind of falls into place and is leveled out so it's not any more or less than any other part of the film. Um, so watching the film, I want to say give the film credit for the initial scenes where they actually have a lack of music for the whole test fly scene and the robbers who are, or the FBI who are going off after the thieves and all of that. So initially you would think that you'd have a lot of um, dramatic music or action music or things like that, but it was relatively quiet aside from the usual car sounds and the guys yelling, the plane sounds when the guy who's in the Rocketeer outfit is flying the plane. So overall I found that to be better and I think I'm, I'm more partial to things like that than an overly dramatic music scene that doesn't really need to be there or a scene that relies more on its music for drama than it needs to be. So. I thought that particularly of note. 
Um, and then when we get to the scene with Howard Hughes, the guy who created the um, jetpack in, for the film, he actually got to me to thinking a lot of um, Tony Stark's dad from the MCU and Iron Man films. And for the rest of the film, I got to thinking about how the Rocketeer was it could be an interesting prequel to the Iron Man franchise, where um, Tony Stark's dad tried to create this flight suit um, of a guy in a jetpack to fly and uh, potentially have military applications. But like we saw in Iron Man Two, he the technology didn't support what they wanted to do. The fuel consumption was. Um, astronomical so it was not feasible to have one person in a jetpack fly across the country um, and I mean they explained it in the film about heating the fuel and then cooling it to, for efficiency or something like that that he that Howard Hughes was able to solve but I got to thinking about how in Iron Man 2 Tony Stark's dad was talking about how the technology is not feasible to have that suit or to have the um, nanoparticles or the microparticles and things like that to make a jetpack or a person in a suit feasible for military applications or general applications or anything like that, which is why you only have a jetpack and then you had a homegrown version of a helmet. And then do you take it from there and he can fly around and all that, but once you start having add, wanting to add things like weaponry or maybe flight guidance or things like that, then it falls apart because the jetpack either can't support it or the fuel, like it keeps going back to the fuel is not, it doesn't, the fuel math doesn't work out for practical applications. So, um, it's one of those things where it was a pretty interesting, like alpha case for it, but, um, it kind of falls apart from there. And then it kind of, it also explains how Tony could have potentially seen those plans or the plans were in the vault and he remembered it and that's how he was able to use it to create the Iron Man suit. And because um, it was originally developed by the Germans, how um, Anton Vanko, I want to say, from the second Iron Man film, also had the plans and it was um, matching or identical plans because it was the same, because they got the plans and he was able to create it based on an old design that didn't work. but. Um, still create it because it was like 90% there. Um, so thinking of it in those terms, The Rocketeer becomes an, a much better film than it already is, but thinking of it as a um, prequel to the Iron Man films, um, as a means of Tony Stark's dad cre creating the idea for it and Tony being able to finish on that idea. Um, and then next up, as far as people in the film that I didn't remember, um, so the first was um, Timothy Dalton, who plays an actor bad guy in the film as a double agent. And playing a washed up James Bond turning into a movie star was a good transition into public life. And so as far as acting goes, this was probably the lowest of the acting just because in, on one hand, he because he's an actor, you know that he's, act, he's playing an actor in the film. Um, rather than the actor playing a role so in, in the Rocketeer film. So he's playing an actor in the movie The Rocketeer, and he's generally going to ham it up. So in general, it felt like he was overacting a lot, but it works in the role of the film. So, And because he's a double agent, all of that falls into play, in place. But it's probably the only thing that kind of took things out for me, because like when he's trying to make his moves on Jennifer Holland Connelly, that that kind of feels like it was the male chauvinism of the time so it's kind of strange and hard to watch but then he's also hamming it up to get what he wants so it was one of those things where i overall the i didn't like the acting thinking in modern terms of a role but it generally just uh fit as far as what his he was called upon to do as far as the role in the film um, and then finally, as far as the look and feel of the Rocketeer and the actor who was inside the suit, it felt a lot like Captain America meets Silver, Silver Iron Man. So, um, in general, the guy in the suit for the Rocketeer felt, had the heart and personality of Captain America, Steve Rogers. So, you know, kind of do the right thing, do good things. He has that bit of intrigue in him. He's kind of down and out on his luck, so he... Um, he is, he's not really depressed, but you know he kind of wants to do the right thing, and um, 
get the girls back as far as Jen- Jennifer Connelly goes, who kind of likes with Steve Rogers and thinking that Peggy Carter is out of his league, but he's still really interested in her. So the, a lot of parallels as far as him um, being his the guy being the man being Steve Rogers, and then when he's in the suit, he's a lot like Iron Man when he or Lisa Tony Stark as Iron Man, but sober. So uh, very. Interesting comparison now that you think about it. So if they were to make a... So you can kind of see how with Iron Man and Captain America, um, a lot of pre... a lot of, or Some of the stories and basis for their characters could potentially have come from the Rocketeer. Um, so that's really the bulk of my review. So if I was to grade the film, um, I'd probably give it about a 90% to 95%. Um, overall it was good, um, still a very good time, um, yes it's cheesy and kind of acting is kind of a product of its times, but they're trying to give that vibe of the, uh, you know, 1920s and 30s, a little bit of the, um, Flash Gordon vibe, um, you know, kind of everyone's optimistic, the technology of the time and stuff like that, so overall a good film, nothing really I can want to say to take a, take away from it. The gangsters were a little bit cheesy and goofballish, but I think this film is kind of before, um, or it's made, maybe kind of mimicking a time when gangsters were portrayed as a little bit goofy and outlandish, but um, things like that, you know, you want to take it takes you out of the film a little bit. But when you think of it as a whole, it kind of just works. So on Rotten Tomatoes, the critic score it, or it has a critic score of 66% and an audience score of 65%. So generally better than half of people like the film. Um, so setting aside the cheesiness of it and that the main actor in the Rocketeer suit is kind of like a the younger brother to like Brandon Fraser, who could have potentially also played a played the character in this role. Um, in general, it, it was. It's still a good film, good times, um, and worth watching. Um, and I wouldn't mind seeing if they made a uh, 4K conversion of the film to see if that kind of improves the picture quality. But even then, the DVD quality of the film that you see on um, Disney Plus is pretty good. I mean, in general, it's easy to watch, and overall, the transitions seem pretty seamless, at least to my eye. So. And then again, that's just me, and you know, I always, I sometimes have a little bit of trouble seeing things like that, unless it's blatantly obvious. You know, you can see the stitching in, you know, space, or they're doing funny camera movements or things like that. But in this case, they, I didn't notice anything strange like that. So overall, I want to say that I still enjoy the film and definitely recommend giving it another watch. Um, if you had good memories of the film, or if you want to kind of see a film that's the alpha version of uh, Captain America style character and Iron Man without actually being Iron Man. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, thoughts, I think, or thoughts or uh, things I missed or anything like that, you can find me on uh, Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next.